looking up, the setup will automatically change that and I can save out this animation as well. So it makes going, uh, b building animations and building characters in your game super, super simple. Yeah, that's cool that you can make little tweaks and it kind of accommodates for that. I'll show you another one. Um, I think it's Spinosaurus. Continue without saving. Spinosaurus. So it's not just for. It's not just for um, your characters, but if you're animating your screens, same way. Oh, that's so great. I can you can see I'm scaling it in and out, scaling it and moving it down, or they did, and then I'm moving stuff up from below the visual uh, version of it. Um, yeah. So you can animate everything. I think sometimes when you think about animation, you're thinking about just the character itself. Yeah, definitely. And then one more. Um, we'll look at Spine Boy. Um, Spine Boy is, is obviously their, their default and what they use to do all their demos and stuff. Um, we'll look at him. Again, he has a very smooth... I'm going to collapse the dope sheet a bit so you can see him more. Uh, but he has more than one animation, so it, he doesn't just have a walk animation. Um, he has a jump animation, too. And you can tie them together. But here's the cool thing, especially if you're a developer. Actually, let me stop this. Um, if I want to export it, actually... Um, there's a couple ways to export it. So when I created mine, what I did is I uh, exported it as a JPEG. And what that will do is it'll create, depending on how many frames you want, um, you can choose the number of frames you want, it'll actually create the individual frames, just like um, when we uh, created the, the little cubby and pulled them in the Game Maker in a previous one. Um, he had individual little frames that then you can pull in the Game Maker. But even more cool, um, you have a JSON export. So what this does is it it exports the uh, map, which is just those little character pieces that I had, and it exports the JSON that relates to the bones. It relates to the uh, way the bones move, the way the bones are connected, and you can import that into uh, Game Maker, you can import that into Unity, you can import it into Cocos, you can import it to a lot of different stuff. And what that allows you to do is on the fly in your game change the way the bones work. So if you wanted him to look up at the sky only when a bird was up there, you can do that without having to create a separate animation. Um, so it just saves you so much time uh, when you're working on stuff. Yeah, that's really cool and that would be nice to be able to use your animations across different games or different game platforms that you're using. Yeah, the fact that the, they do uh, binary exports and they do uh, base exports at like C Sharp and uh, um, C++ okay. and JavaScript. It allows you to, you know, pull it in HTML5, whatever type of game you want to build. Um, these these images allow you to do that. Yeah, that's very cool. I haven't used Spine, but after that, I might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, actually, I hope everyone does. So, uh, hopefully, uh, in this uh, section, you uh, enjoyed it. Um, it's a lot of fun to work with Spine. Um, it's really not that hard. Coming from a developer that's not a designer, that's not an art artist, uh, being able to pull and import images in and connecting the bones and animating the bones are really simple. Just a little few tweaks. So hopefully you enjoyed this today, and uh, uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with the next module. Welcome back to Advanced Techniques for Game Maker. I'm Natalie. I'm Daniel. And this is Module 3, so we're going to be talking about advertising and analytics. Making money. Yes. And seeing that where, always you're, make, and seeing where you're making money. <laughs> so we're going to start out with advertising today. Um, so ad advertising to your game is actually really simple. Um, there are many ad services out there, but we're going to be talking about Microsoft, um, Microsoft Ads today. So if I hop over to the website, um, so I'm over on this site, adsinapps.microsoft.com.us. Um, so 
Like many services, the way it works is advertisers pay a cost per impression model, which is an ad displayed per customer, and then you as the developer or the publisher gets that revenue when the ad is displayed by your users. So um, the way the Microsoft ads works is that you would get 70% of the revenue and then 30% uh, to um, the service that you used. So one thing to note is that this actually only works for games that are targeting uh, customers 12 plus. So make sure to account for that when you submit your game to the store if you're looking to make revenue off your game. So um, if we head over to Microsoft Pub Center, well actually before that, uh, I think we wanted to talk about the different displays of where you can put your ads in your game. Yeah, and actually I'll, I'll show you, it's not going to show up on here because it's dynamic. Um, actually, let me bring this screen up. This is for Dave in the Cave. And so if you play uh, Dave in the Cave, every time you clear a level, um, this screen is going to pop up. And this, what I want to talk about is people think they're going to have a windfall uh, in advertising. And advertising works in very specific games. I do have ads in Dave in the Cave. And I will tell you right now that I have not gotten a windfall um, for a couple reasons. And I actually have a, a lot of users, um, 100,000 downloads total. Um, but I have it in the screen in between the game for a couple reasons. One, I didn't want to create... Uh, an ad inside the main rooms where it would annoy the player. Um, but they go to this level screen in just an instant and they're out. So they barely ever see it. So placement of the ad uh, is very important and not every game uh, can really do well on ads. But that being said, it's really, really easy to implement and put in your game. Just be aware of the placement and, and actually where you want to put it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll actually be able to see um, picturing where to place those when we go into the Pub Center. But so over here, I'm still on the Ads and Apps website. And that's, this is a great resource if you wanted to learn more tips and tricks about uh, the ad service in general. They also have really great uh, forums and blog posts about that on here. So if you want to really dig into that, uh, I'd recommend looking at this. But the way we're going to do this is through Pub Center. And I went over to pubcenter.microsoft.com. And what you'll need to get signed up here is a Microsoft ID account. So I've already got mine set up here. Um, that's your developer account. And then this is what the portal looks like. And, and that's a Microsoft ID that they'll need to sign up? Right, yeah. So I went over here to monetize new app. And then let's do a Windows app. So MVA test app. And so you'll want to put in your app name here. And then this is where we can see, let me zoom out maybe, so we can see this is the placement. This is showing us a preview of the placement of where you can place your apps. So first add. And you can pick your size uh, as well. So that one is to actually integrate uh, directly into the app instead of being something on the side, the last one you chose. Yes, yeah, cool. exactly. Cool. So the thing to make sure uh, with whatever ads you choose is you want to get revenue. Uh, you're getting more revenue the longer that someone has your ads open. But you also don't want them to be disruptive to your game. So that might depend on the type of game you have. Maybe if you have a platformer and you don't have anything going on in the sky area of your game, uh, maybe you'd want to place it up the top there or on the right somewhere. It really depends on what game you have, but you want to make sure that uh, your ads aren't disrupting your experience. Otherwise, that might you know, just negatively impact your game as a whole. You can also pick uh, the category for your ads. So I usually recommend picking something related to whatever your game is about. So um, if you're making a card game, you could pick one of the, uh, the game's card ads. Uh, but you can use this for any app, not just for games. So if you were doing a social app or sports, you could pick something related to that. So I'm just going to go ahead and, since we're putting it on our game, um, it's kind of adventurous. I'll put it on there. Is this for your uh, mushroom adventure game? 
Uh, I was going to try and place it on the platformer, but I guess I could look into putting it in my mushroom game in the future. I don't have ads on there right now, but I should get some. So here we can see um, that this is the app that I just made. This is one I was messing with before and didn't actually put it in there properly. But here you would be able to see a list of the apps you have monetized if you have more than one. And you can set up any sort of alerts that you want, payment details. So you would also want to put your payment details in here to get revenue as well. And I, and I can see that you're making just slightly less than what I'm making at, in Dave and Dave <laughs> right now. So. Yeah, it would be interesting to see <laughs> your um, portal for no, Dave. I'm, and yeah, Dave. no, I'm not going to show that. <laughs> So I think it actually takes a couple of days for any sort of revenue to show up in here. I mean, we haven't put it in yet, but that's just something to keep in mind if you're wondering why things haven't showed up and you're getting a lot of hits on it. So now that we have all of this set up, let's just go and get the details for that because we want to put this into um, Game Maker in a second. So, okay, now that we have this, we'll hop back over to Game Maker. And this is the same platformer game we were working with earlier. And the way I would go set that up is I'd go into the Resources tab that's up here and go to the Change Global Game Settings. And we'd go over to Advertising. It's over here on the right. There it is. Wait, I was, yeah, that one. I wasn't clicking on it. So we're going to go in and put in the info from the ads that the ad that we made in PubCenter. You want to change the provider up there? Yeah. Yeah. Which one do I want to change it to? Are you on the Windows 8? Go to the Windows 8 tab on the left. Oh. Yeah. Don't forget to change to Windows 8 if that's what you're doing. <laughs> So I'm using Pub Center, and this is where I would put in the app unit ID over from Pub Center. So I'm just going to copy that in. And we want to make sure that we pick the same size. So. I guess I ended up going with the 300 by 251. So over here on the right, you can pick that. And you want to enable advertising and the test ads over here. So now that we have that, um, and you also want it to correspond to the ID that you made. So this is the first one that I have, so I've put it here in zero. And I'm going to press OK. So now that we have that in there, we actually have to put in like one line of code to actually be able to see our ads in the game. So we're going to go over to Room, and I'm going to put this up here just so that we see uh, level one first when I press play. So now that I have level one open, I want to go into the code and um, add the ads into that there. So where do we have the code in here? Oops. Looking for the? I'm looking for the creation code. I can't remember where I put that or where that was. Let's see. Um, oh, here it's, it is. Uh, it's in settings. settings. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So it's actually, we're just going to be using the ads enable function. So here we can see it pops up. And the x, y will refer to the position that we want to put it in. So we kind of talked about ad placement um, earlier. So in this game, since we have a platformer and he's just running, we don't have anything going on at the top of our game. So um, I'm going to try to position it somewhere over there. And then the number part is the number that it was in the ads uh, list. And if you remember, I had it as in there as zero. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this function. 
And then I think I'm going to guesstimate this position to be something like this. And we'll see if that worked. So if you're testing this too, you want to make sure you're doing it in Windows 8 native because uh, the Windows uh, one will just be an EXE and ads will not show up in that. Oh, this is that um, other problem. Yeah, so this, I'm actually <laughs> glad that came up. So uh, when you're doing testing in Windows 8, uh, quite often you'll need to, every time you run it uh, in Windows 8, you'll do most of your testing just in Windows, but when you're testing Windows 8 specific functions, you'll want to actually go and delete uh, the, the installed version of the game so you can run it again, um, and that error will go away. Uh, it just has a hard time removing the old one before it installs the new one. But quite honestly, you'll, you'll be in the regular Windows one when you're testing your game most of the time. So there we go. We have the ad up here on the top right. So if I just continued to play this game, um, it's not disruptive at all, and I'd probably get a decent amount of revenue because, you know, it's open there the whole time if they don't die in the first few seconds. And obviously, you can tweak it to make it look a little better. Right, yeah, exactly. 